Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and this is The Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. We're going to talk about our foil and hot stamping machine. I was a little surprised. We don't necessarily think of all the things that this machine will do for us. So let's start off with a couple of samples. See what we're talking about. When we think of heat stamping or foil stamping, our first thought is initials. Absolutely, we see this everywhere. But all told, this is a simple card wallet. That alone makes that a completely professional looking project. And these will enhance all manner of projects. But let's step out of the box a little bit. So on a belt, all kinds of ways we can go here. We can drop in a sizing or say a holster. We need a left or right handed. We need to denote that. But we could drop in initials or a small company name. I love these. We're setting our own type. So therefore, for wrist cuffs, we can drop in any statement saying birthday, name, convention. Say we have a convention going on or a Bible verse. Again, we're setting the type. Let's drop in anything we want. In fact, there's a company name in the copper. Keychains, very simple, very elegant, a split ring and three silver initials. Here's my favorite though. I love this. Let's personalize our projects. Let's drop in either a gold or a silver foil and then drop in a brass or nickel rivet. Rivet that onto our project. Absolutely professional. All right, I'm going to reset here. Let's learn how to set our letters. There are two ways we can set our letters. It's going to sound confusing. It isn't. So we can set our letters to where they're right reading, left to right. So when we stamp this, lift the stamp head, we can read that. The other way we can go is upside down. This is the way I tend to go most often because the throat on the machine is only about four, maybe four and a half inches deep. So therefore, if I want that right reading, that won't fit in there. So I can flip that around. The balance of the project is outside of the machine and that is super easy to do. Let's start right here. So when we set our letters, we've got a type holder. And this is marked. We've actually got a center line here and we've got stops. So let's let one of the stops out. Now I'm going to spell out Weaver. Let's get a good close up of this. So W E A V E R. But notice we're going backwards. We're literally spelling the word backwards. We don't have to worry about upside down, simply backwards. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to load that into my, my type holder. Now let's make a rule right now. This will make sense here very shortly. Let's always insert the type holder from the right side of the machine so that the handle is on the right. In fact, that's the way it's pictured on the owner's manual. So with my weaver, I'm going to insert this exactly as I see here. Now, here's a little bit of help. If this is a little confusing and it can be to start, you'll get the hang of it in no time. Let's take some of our plastic sheeting or whatever. Let's write out weaver. Now let's simply flip that over. Okay. Now I can see the direction of my E's and my R's. So that'll be a little bit of help getting you up to speed. So let's load this in just as we see it here. And the R and our stop. There we go. Now on our type holder, we've got a center line there and it looks like I'm pretty centered. So I want to make sure one in this tight. We don't really have to crank down on these screws too hard. But what I do want to do, let's press in and tighten that. Good. Everything is nice and tight. So now when I enter this into the machine from the right side, that's going to be upside down. There's my impression. To do this the other way, to get this right side up, all we're going to do is take our type holder, put our handle to the left, spell out Weaver just like we did there and load it in. It's as easy as that. Okay, we've got a feel for setting the type here. One more thing before we move on though. Our set here. I believe this is everything that's on a common keyboard and we've got multiples of the vowels and more commonly used letters. Okay, let's step over and load our foil. There are two ways we can use our foil. If we're a crafter, we can simply cut from one of our rolls width and length, whatever we need. It's going to be a very efficient way to go. For a production shop, we can absolutely be just as efficient. This is a foil mount. It's going to come with a machine, simply bolts onto the frame. We've got a feed roll and a take up roll. So let's start right here with our foil. I'm going to load this to where my foil is going to come across the top. 
towards the machine. Let's put that on right down to the end of that bar. And I'll explain that as well. So with our foil, let's go under this second bar, across our base plate, under the same bar on the other side, and let's bring that up and simply tape that to our take up spool. Now, we're gonna have some waste here. Let's keep that because we know if we get an order for 50, we're gonna have just enough foil to do 49. So these extra little pieces can really pull us out of a hole, okay? On our markings, I've got this all the way to the end of the spool and I've got a mark right here. It's about a quarter of an inch in. That's the very, very farthest back that I can make an impression on this foil. So what I'm going to do is I'll make my impression. I'll progress, make my impression, get all the way to this end. I'm gonna scoot this back to my next mark, three eighths of an inch in. Now I can work my way all the way back. Here's where I'm going with this. So with weaver leather, I can get four across. That's two inches. Our rolls are 200 feet. So therefore, if I do this, I can get 4,800 impressions off of one roll. So once we purchase the machine, very inexpensive to operate. So now we've got our foil loaded. Let's load our type. We've determined that we're only going to insert our type holder from the right side. So let's flip this over, insert that right here, slides right in. Now we've got two bolts here. Let's tighten these down. We've got an Allen wrench, comes with the equipment. Let's tighten that. And again, we don't have to go too hard there. We just wanna lock that in. Good. Now, with our temperature, and we'll get a better look at this, but let's flip our machine on. Now this bottom number, this is what we set. This is the temp we want. Right here's the actual temp. Now, for, for the foil stamping, we're gonna go 120 degrees, and that's listed right there. Heat stamp, we'll look at that. That's a good bit hotter. But one note, 120 degrees, this is Celsius. So therefore, for those of us working in Fahrenheit, that's 250 degrees, I believe. So that head's gonna be pretty hot. The point here is let's turn it off, let it cool off before we change out our type holder. And again, when we turn it on, let's make sure our type holder is in the machine. So it's climbing pretty quick. Let's give this about, say, maybe two minutes. Let that head come up to temp. We're up to temp, and in fact, it doesn't take too long to get there. So let's move our foil back. We're gonna take a look at our base plate. Got a couple of good pluses here. So first off, this slides out. It's hard to see and it's hard to work under there. Now, I've got some tape on here. This is exactly where my impression is going to land. We've got a grid work here. We've got a center line left to right and top to bottom. So that's gonna make it very easy to drop in a jig. And in fact, I've got a jig right here. This is simply eight to nine ounce leather. But if we've got a project or multiple projects that we need that impression to land in the same place each time, every time, all we have to do is drop in a jig, measure it out. We can drop in our leather, stamp, drop in the next stamp. Each and every are going to be consistent. So let's push this in, bring our foil back out, and I'm going to come out to my first mark, which means that's the furthest back that I can use my foil. So when we stamp, it's not just a down and down and back. We're gonna hold this to the count of three, but it's a fast three. So let's lay this in. One, two, three. That's all we need. Let's separate the foil. There we go. Look at that. That is beautiful, crisp and clean. This is our Lexi, and I love this leather, but isn't that silver? That just pops on this leather. Okay, let's get a good feel for our controls. To set our temperature, We've got a set button right here. So we're going to press that. Now we can cycle through our numbers with a directional arrow to raise or lower our temp. Then we just hit set. That's gonna hold that temperature. Right here, we've got an off light. That's gonna pop on and off. The machine is still on. That's just the element coming on and off to keep the head consistent. Next, we're gonna to go to our hot stamp. That's 250 degrees. So let's set this. and press set. There we go, so we'll see the temperature start to climb. These numbers are good. I've worked a little up and a little down. These seem to be good temperatures. What we don't wanna do is if we go too high on our foil, it's gonna cook the adhesive. So therefore it will be splotchy. We want that very clean and very consistent. So let's let this come up to speed. Then we're gonna try a hot stamp. We're up to temp, and in all honesty, it didn't take much time. This climbs pretty fast. One good point, 250 Celsius, 
Fahrenheit, that's about 450 degrees. So this head is hot. Let's be careful there. But let's start with a piece of natural veg tan. Very nice, clean and consistent. That's what we're looking for. Let's try a piece of our Lexi again. That is a nice touch. I love this machine. Now, one final point. If our impression is a little inconsistent, it's an easy fix. All we have to do is loosen two nuts right here and either increase or decrease on the nuts below that, tighten those back down. It's an easy fix if we're inconsistent. But all told, this is a great machine. And a very welcome addition in my shop. We can do so much with this machine. Things that we wouldn't normally think about on the surface. But also, we did not even go into paper, plastic, and wood. No kidding. The owner's manual, that will give us temperatures for each of these materials. But there's one more point. That's our plastic sheeting or our pattern sheeting. Yeah, take that ball and run with it, right? We can have professional projects and professional patterns. I hope this is good information for you. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.